Well, like you know, this is a very, very special weekend. Tonight's a very special night because it's a time where if you're a guest or you're new, once a year, we go through, as it were, uh, uh, you could call it some of the, the giving and where does finances go and so forth and so on. And we're going to cover that tonight. And I hope you bear with us. You're going to hear from uh, many different leaders tonight. And first of all, you're going to hear from my beautiful wife and I. We love this weekend, especially this weekend, 15 years celebrating Heart of the City Church. And we're just going to talk about, you know, some of the past in the beginning. We were sent out 15 years ago from City Harvest Church in a place called Vancouver, Washington. I had the opportunity to spend the night with my pastor just the other night. I was passing through Vancouver and, or close to it and spent the night with him. Had a wonderful, wonderful time. Uh, he's, still of our, he's still our pastor, Pastors Bob and Sue, and they pour into our lives, and, and they're just wonderful, wonderful people. And I honor them tonight because of what they've done in our life and how they have poured into Heart of the City Church and all the other church plants that they have sent out. Uh, we were sent out in 2006. We had the honor to be the very first uh, church plant, USA church plant, out of City Harvest Church. That was a great honor. God used many things. One of the things that he used, some of you will remember, is Deuteronomy chapter 8 and the word copper and how God used a simple word copper uh, to impact and to plant us and root us here. One, one important thing to know is when you church plant, you better know that you hear from God. You better know that you hear from God to where you're to church plant because I'm telling you, the devil doesn't like it. You will be faced with tribulations. You will have mountains, you will have valleys, and you will have plains. And what's important through it all, you know that you've heard from God. That's what's vital. That's what you always go back to. I want to read Deuteronomy 8, 7 through 9. It's a beautiful scripture. It says, for the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land. How many of you agree that Coeur d'Alene is a good land? Amen. Some of you didn't say a word. <laughs> How many of you agree that Coeur d'Alene is a good land? Yes. If, if, you, if you don't think it is, I would encourage you to move. I'm just telling you. I'll just tell you how it is. A land of brooks of water, of fountains and springs and flows of move if it's God's will. The flow out of the valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive oil and honey. How many know what olive oil represents? The anointing of God, the presence of the Holy Spirit. A land in which you will eat bread without scarcity. How many know that we've never, we've never lacked in Heart of the City Church? And, and it goes on to say, in which you will, you will lack nothing. A land whose stones are iron and, whose, and out of the hills you can dig copper. And I tell you what, one thing that sticks out to me after 15 years is our first year. I used to say this, if you can find us, come and worship with us. And not just then, but throughout the years, but especially that first year. Isn't that true? I mean, some of you joined us here, and so you think, wow, look at this amazing facility. So we're just going to rehearse a little bit of the goodness of God. And that's what actually Jonathan and I have been doing this week, just remembering, remembering. It's so good for all of us to remember all that God has done. But I was remembering us moving here in June of 2006, and we had our very first Heart of the City Church gathering in our home. And after that, we realized we can't keep meeting in our home. We're growing. So we found a facility on 15th Street. Some of you know it, Harding Family Center. We spent our summer there. We met in some classrooms for a while, and then we outgrew those. So we met in the gymnasium in the middle of summer with no air conditioning. <laughs> so thank you for those of us. I saw Dean and Tammy Sears here. It's like they sweated it out with us. And from Harding Family Center, we moved to Fernand Elementary School and met in a cafeteria. Nathan, you should have heard the sound in the cafeteria. It was unique. And our kids' ministry was in a hallway because we couldn't use the classroom. So again, it's like, it's always amazing to me all that God will do. We did our grand opening in Fernand Elementary School. Come on. God can move anywhere. And I believe he's very purposeful about every place that we're at. There was a blessing that remained there. From Fernand Elementary, we moved to our first church. It was a Seventh-day Adventist. Since they meet on Saturday night, we said, hey, can we use your facility on Sunday? So we grew there. And I 
I was just remembering every place that we went to, all the beautiful people that joined us at each location. There were people that would walk through the door. And I remember some prophetic people praying over us when we church planted, saying, there are people in Coeur d'Alene that are waiting for you to come. And sure enough, we've watched these people walk through the doors of Heart of the City Church. So Seventh-day Adventists, we moved to Indiana Street, a cute little building on Indiana and Second with restrooms in the sanctuary. I held it a lot because you could hear the toilet flush in the sanctuary. And when the door opened, people fixing their hair, you saw it. But miraculously, at Indiana, we grew to four gatherings at Indiana. And that's also where we started our first father's market. God does a lot with a little. Our father's market started out with a long counter that was at the front door of Indiana Street. But we grew while we were there. I, rem- I just want to share one story of a particular young girl that came when we were at Indiana. Her name is Krista, was Krista Beatty, and now her name's Krista Bullard. She walked through the door. We knew her. Jonathan and I knew her from some summer camp. She was 18 years old, and she would drive from Spokane, Washington every weekend. She worked with our kids. She became our kids' director. A few days ago, Krista turned 33 years old. She's married, has two kids thriving in the church here, and her kids now are apart of Heart of the City Church Kids. Is that beautiful? Just family and legacy. From Indiana Street, we got our first church building, and it was miraculous. We were dreaming. It was a beautiful church across from Kootenai um, Health, and it was way out of our price range, and it was too big, right? But we still dreamed. We still pursued. A developer bought it. All was lost, and then that fell through. And we went back to the church, and we told them our circumstance, and that church, actually, the small church that was meeting there, they carried our loan for, I think, about two or three years so that we could meet there. And God, as I am rehearsing the goodness of God, just apply that in your own life. God is faithful. He loves big dreams, and he wants to fulfill big dreams. So at Emma Street, we grew to four gatherings there. Father's Market expanded at Emma. We had a whole downstairs basement where Father's Market could meet on Thursdays and then during the weekends. That's where our kids' ministry was. And we outgrew Emma. We, boy, I'll tell you, that parking lot and all the parking down the street, we just occupied all of that area of the health corridor that is, that is today. And we had our sights set on this building, Uh, but again, it was like a big, big dream, way out of our price range, Um, and so we just believed God for it. God came through for us. We actually had a credit union loan us the money who had never loaned to it, done a a church loan before, so just miraculous circumstances, but before we could move in here, we had to remodel, but we had to be out of our other facility, and so at the end of December, five years ago, we had a church gathering like this, and then literally everybody picked up chairs and desks and office equipment and hauled what they could to fairgrounds, which was our church, for three months, and what wouldn't fit at the fairgrounds we put in storage, and we had the most beautiful time at the fairgrounds. It was such an exciting time. Our kids' ministry was in cubicles, and uh, our offices were like tables that sat around from each other. We had an amazing prophetic sound conference there in January, and we actually grew when we were at the fairgrounds, and then we landed here in March, and Heart of the City Church is what you're seeing now today. I I remember one story at Indiana Street. Matt Moult, uh, he had left me a message saying that, man, J.O., I just had a a, a vision of of water flowing through the sanctuary of Heart of the City Church. We opened up the building the next day, and there was a, a flood. A flood. So it was pretty literal. How many know we're to be a people after God's own heart? We are. Uh, at the end of the day, is there, is, there very, is there more things important than people coming to know Jesus Christ? If there is, then you tell me. Please, please tell me. If there's something more than people, hell being emptied, and heaven being full. Is there, more, is there anything more important than making it hard for people to go to hell in your city? Well, that's what I want to talk about just for a minute, is to be a people after God's own heart, and that it's so important for people to know God. 
You're going to see right here, um, back that up. To be a people after God's own heart, know God. In just a moment, you're going to hear from Craig in the area of finding freedom. You're going to hear discover purpose and make a difference. But this is our, our, main, our main vision at Heart of the City Church. Right now, I want to show you, thank you, Logan, uh, how many people got saved or made decisions for Jesus Christ in the past year. Um, we had a vision, we had a dream. We had a dream that we were praying for 1010 to get saved in 2020. And we didn't see 1010, but guess what? We did see 631. Over the last six years, let me just give you six years. Over the last six years, from 2021, 631 people. Think about this. 19 to 20, 656 people. From 2018 to 2019, 838 people. From 2017 to 2018, um, 688. From 16 to 17, 463. From 2015 to 2016, 332. Over the last six years, 3,608 people have made decisions for Jesus Christ. We're going to rehearse the goodness of God in the area of water baptisms, too. I mean, each of you probably have that experience, how powerful that is. But what you see here in these water drops, each water drop represents five people that have been water baptized this last year for a total of 72 people. Any of you that have experience when we do water baptisms, it's such a precious sight. We have seen families be baptized together, watch little girls being baptized, and dads and moms laying hands on them. And what that represents when someone's water baptized for individuals, for families and marriages is restoration. It's a coming out of darkness and depression and, um, and just uh, just really darkness into going down into the waters of baptisms and coming up a new creation in Christ. We all remember that moment when it's like, wow, I can let old things be gone and rise up into new things. And so we consider water baptism crucial in our walk with Christ here. We usually do water baptisms the first Sunday of every month, but there's something very special happening on Sunday, August 8th. We're going to do Coeur d'Alene Lake water baptisms down in the city. It happens right after youth camp. And just like what we'll experience tomorrow with Church in the Park, when we do water baptisms at Coeur d'Alene Lake, it is such a beautiful celebration for our city to see the power of God and the transformation in people's lives. Beautiful. Wow. Look what the Lord has done. You're going to hear from different folks tonight. One thing that I want to say is that over the last 15 years, God has put together just an amazing staff here at Heart of the City Church, and we're tremendously blessed. You're going to hear from Pastor Craig Brown right now. Give him a hand. Awesome. So our vision is to be a people after God's own heart, to help people come to know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and make a difference. And um, I don't know about you. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm the only one, but when I was younger, because I was forced to go to church, um, I kind of... I kind of viewed this whole thing kind of like fire insurance. Like for me, like knowing God was just about going somewhere when I die. Just a couple of us. Yeah. I, that tends to happen, you know. It's like, it's like, yeah, I'm a Christian, but, but it doesn't necessarily change a whole lot about this life for some people sometimes. But I'm so thankful that after 17 years of my life of saying that I knew God, that that I actually came to know him in a real way. And when I came to know him in a real way, things started to change. Because that's what God does and that's what we exist to do is not just see people raise their hand and make a commitment, but real life change. And what God does, if you, you see this, if you read the Bible, everywhere Jesus went, he didn't just make converts, he brought freedom to people. Like he was healing people, he was casting out demons, he was delivering people, he was setting people free from bondage on the inside to shame and guilt and all of those things. And so one of the things that we wanna partner with God in doing is helping people find freedom. Because why? Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And so... We want to make sure you guys know that we're committed to doing what Jesus did. 
Not just having church services so people will raise their hands so we can say some number at a meeting like this once a year. No, no, but every single one of those numbers is a person that matters, and, and, and they matter more than just salvation at the end of this life. This life matters. And so we want to see you find freedom. And so uh, I want to I talk a, a little bit about what we call groups of the heart, but I don't want to get this twisted Groups for us is just one way of accomplishing the bigger goal, which is finding freedom, right? But we actually believe this, so I want to read this to you. We believe that living freely in the fullness of what Jesus intended occurs in community. You see, because if we believe in freedom, then we're going to believe in gathering in groups because of the way that God set it up. So our groups are designed to help people find freedom, that freedom through the Spirit. Of course, it takes the Holy Spirit inside of us but also the people around us. And so I just want to remind you that over 50 times in the New Testament, the the Bible commands us to do something to or for one another. Contrary to popular belief, the Christian faith is impossible to walk out without other people. And so I just want to make sure you know, like, groups are not just like some program that we're just trying to get people into a program we're trying to help people really discover what, what relationship and life is and true freedom in the spirit because it takes people walking with us, encouraging us. I just, I just wish I could tell you story after story of all the things that we've seen and experienced in so many people's lives. I'll just tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, we, have, we have a community group. There's all kinds of groups, men's groups, women's groups, community, educational training, groups about everything. And, and they, all, they all kind of primarily, uh, this is kind of a statement that we have, ESPN, encouragement, scripture, prayer, and next steps. And we do that in all of our groups, and it looks different for different types of groups, and that's cool. But I'll just tell you about a little bit, of my, little bit about my group. Uh, the type of conversations that we can have in, in Kleenex ministry that we can partake in, you, you know what I'm saying, when the tears and the boogers and everything, because you're crying, it doesn't always take place in this setting. Because there are some things that you just can't really open up. And, and ha- some things can only happen in the midst of, of relationship and conversation and transparency. And so I wish that I could had time to tell you all the stories, but um, I got to move on. I just, I just want to make sure that you know the value of these groups and the value of walking with people and helping them find freedom. We saw uh, like around 100 leaders this last year around 50 to 70 different groups at different times in the year. And the last thing I'll leave you with is this. Coming into the fall, we're really excited coming off of last year to see everybody that sits in a seat on the weekend have a seat on a couch during the week because we want to see everybody in our church come alive in real relationship. And so if you're not in a group, I hope you consider finding one. And you, maybe you, just might be called by God to lead one or host one. And if so, then come and find me and we'll get you connected because God is doing great things. I want to invite up Pastor Stephen to talk all about the next part of our vision. Thanks, Craig. Our heart is that for every one of you, we would help you discover your purpose and for you to fulfill that and see God move in and through you. We have a defining statement. If you'll throw that next slide up, I want to read it. In fact, can we read this together? It says this, we believe that God has a very specific purpose for each person. Our growth track class is designed to help people discover that purpose through the identification of their gifts, passions, and personality traits, as well as the activation of those as a member of Heart of the City. So Growth Track is an awesome opportunity for people to get connected to find out about us. This past year, we graduated 193 people from Growth Track. And every quarter, we add new members to our church family. And last year, we added 132 members to our church family. Now, there are two great focuses of Growth Track. And I promise you, in my 43 years of ministry, I have never been in a church where you have an opportunity to understand the DNA, the core values, the things that are important to help you understand where a church came from, what they stand for, and where they're going 
than what we have to offer here in Growth Track. The second part of Growth Track is the opportunity for us to work with you to help you find your purpose. There's just something about discovering a purpose that God designed you for to see you activated in that and see fruit coming from that in your life. It's an absolute amazing thing. So I have a couple uh, of stories. One is Vaughn and Tanya Lewis. In fact, would you guys just stand up and just wave at us? Here's a couple that was in the church for quite a number of years and really weren't doing anything. And then they contacted us and said, hey, we'd like to have a dessert with you. We met for dessert. We thought maybe their marriage was in trouble. It wasn't in trouble. They said, it's been so many years we haven't done anything. It's time for us to get off the sidelines. And now they're serving on the fit team. They're serving on men's ministry team. They're fulfilling their purpose. I don't know about you, but it gets me excited. There's another family, they're called the Bassets, Dean and Anna Bassett, who moved here specifically from Washington State, felt they were called to move to Coeur d'Alene, found our church, came involved, got in growth track, and says, we just want to serve. And now they're serving in our hospitality team and making a difference. It's an amazing, amazing opportunity. So whether you've been here in the way, on the way, all these years, and you haven't gone to growth track, come be a part of it with us. Or if you're brand new, come check us out because we want to help you discover your purpose and become who God wants you to be and get activated and see fruit. Oh, I love luscious fruit. Every, every, every month, the first three Sundays of every month is when we do growth track. And that's a wonderful opportunity for you to come and kind of get activated with us. Except for the month of July because we had 4th of July last weekend. Tomorrow, we are actually doing class one. So if you haven't been in, hello, you could come tomorrow, 9.09, and as soon as growth track is over, you could go down to the park at 11.11. I'm just saying, Seth, we're Seth. Come on up, bro. God bless you guys. It's great to be here. Great job, Stephen. Papa Stephen. Hey, everyone. We've already talked about knowing God, finding freedom, discovering purpose. I want to talk to you guys about the fourth part of our vision, and that is making a difference. How many of you believe that every one of us, that deep inside of us, there is something that wants to make a dent on this planet while we're here? Even whether we want to admit it or not, it's something that's built into our code. We were made to make a dent. I want to read to you this this kind of statement, if we'll go right here. I want to read this statement because we absolutely believe that this is true about every person. We believe that every person at the core of their being I'm going to get over here because Craig told me to be over here. I'm sorry. I need to follow the rules. At the core of their being desires for their life to make a difference. Our teams are built and facilitated with the primary goal of making a significant impact on people's lives every week, both within our corporate gatherings and throughout our community. Now, really beautiful this year. Now, these, these numbers might not mean something to you unless you, know if, unless you know the heart behind them, unless you know what is being accomplished in them. I can tell you, we had, tw- we had over 25 teams, and you could go, cool, 25 teams. I can tell you, we had about 400 people serve since January 1st of this year, and you could go, oh, cool, well, you, you convinced a lot of people to help. But it's so much more than that. Every single one of those 400 people, every single one of those 400 people did not go and serve on a team and earn some spiritual brownie points. Every single one of those person, people created a potential for a, a, a divine significant encounter with God. They put themselves in a position to be an encounter with God. That's why we're so passionate about teams is because every time that someone steps in that place of service, which by the way, the servant, Jesus said, is the greatest in the kingdom, they're putting themselves in a position to become an encounter with someone who has felt far from Jesus. Now, one of our most shining examples of this is an amazing ministry called Market at the Heart. It used to be called Father's Market. Amen. Amen. If you serve in Market at the Heart, would you just stand real quick if that's the place that you regularly serve? Can we just give these people a hand real quick? Amen. Now, if you, don't, if you don't know about Market of the Heart, Market of the Heart is our food bank and clothing ministry. It takes place on Thursday nights from 4.30 to 6.30 p.m. It's led by an amazing warrior of a woman named Mindy Sizemore and a fantastic... Amen. If you know Mindy, you know that she deserves that kind of applause. Now, 
uh, one of the main things that, that we do in uh, Market at the Heart is that we give away food. And so what these icons represent, every one of these represents 100 pounds of food. In, in, a thousand pounds of food. We, if it was a hundred, we'd have little specks on here. A thousand pounds of food for a total of 59,015 pounds in the last fiscal year. Now, amen. Now, we're stoked about food getting given out, but I want to draw you back again. This number means something because not only was a stomach filled, but people encountered the love of Jesus in action. The love of Jesus in action. Let me just tell you one thing, real, just real quick. The separation of the sheep and the goats, when Jesus was talking about the sheep and the goats, we just go, oh, that was all about just faith. That was all about just belief. No, actually, it wasn't. Uh-oh. I, I, did, I just shake, did I just shake up some people's theology? It was about visiting those in prison. It was about visiting those who are sick. It was about caring for the least of these. It was about feeding the hungry. It was about clothing those who didn't have clothes. Let me just throw a little bit, a little bit of a wrench in your theology that we were called to serve the least of these. And that is a part of what it means to be someone who follows Jesus. We can say, I believe, I believe, I believe all day, but belief looks like something. Belief looks like something. Now, I don't have time to talk about every major ministry um, at Heart of the City tonight, every, every team, but something that we've done that's new that I'm really excited about is, is each one of our major ministries has uh, created a summary, a highlight of the wins from that ministry in the past fiscal year. Now, those are going to be available at theheartcda.com as well as at our Welcome Center, and I would really encourage you to check those out because it goes ministry by ministry telling you what God has done, what God has done in the Heart Creative, what God has done in youth, what God has done in young adults, what God has done in First Impressions and hospitality, so many different uh, areas of the church where, where we have seen significant ground taken for the kingdom. What's also gonna be available with those ministry highlights is, I wanna make sure I say these right, the balance statement and the income statement you're gonna be able to have in your hand if you want to, once again, at the Welcome Center or at theheartcd.com. And now we have Craig Brown and Rick Van Zant to talk to you more about the details of those financial statements. Oh, man. Hi, Craig. I'm just a preacher, and, and Rick, he got a bunch of letters after his name, which means he, he, he likes numbers and he's real smart. <laughs> okay. Right? What, yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is our treasurer, Rick Van Zandt. Oh. <laughs> what do these letters mean, Rick? What, what it really means, CPA, right? Taxes, uh, accounting, accountability, and it is... God wants us accountable because within those boundaries, he can do great things with us. Right. And so that's, that's the accountable part of it. PFS, personal financial specialist. It's letters that nobody's ever heard of, but it means financial planner. And that's the blessing for me. I get to be part of the vision. I get to be part of the planning, the dreaming. And um, so that's, that's my best part of the job. Yeah, I didn't know this, but people like Rick and Bobby... Like, they actually like looking at those sheets with all those numbers. No, they like wait, it. They don't just wait. endure it. They enjoy it. It's crazy. It's just you and me? <laughs> yeah, it's just the two of you. Anyway, so it, for real, though, we're so thankful, um, you know, that we get to do what we're called to do because we have people behind the scenes that are doing what they're not only called but and gifted to do and taking care of helping us be stewards of God's finances. And so we're going to talk about some of the details of the church. And, um, you know, this is maybe the section that some people check out. Um, but if you're not necessarily into all the numbers and all the things, I think that it's cool to at least be in the know because this is, this is family business. And so um, just that you would engage with what it is that God's doing in the family. And let me start by showing you just sort of a vision of just the structure of our church. Um, I, I personally don't like to view the church as an organization, but we are organized, right? And, and God organized our human body, and then he calls the church a body, and so there is organization to it. Like, you don't have an arm growing out of your face and things like that. Like, so he's, he's down with organization and things working in order, but we're not a business. 
We're a family and we're, we're people of faith that are pursuing a vision by God, but we are organized. So just in case you don't know, I wanna make sure you guys understand how this church is structured and how we operate. Our lead pastors, of course, are pastors J.O. and Ray Dean. They and their family came 15 years ago and, and planted this church. And then we are an, uh, an elder-run church because that's biblical. So just, just so you know that the, the eldership is actually the, the highest level of authority in the scripture, so it's the highest level of authority in the church. Now, J.O., of course, is, is the chairman or the lead elder, and the term that I, I, I like that he uses is a, a lead among equals. So we're equal, but he's the leader of that group. And so our elders are J.O., Clark Menzies is also the secretary, myself, and Dave Carlson. And then we also have some advisors, Bob McGregor, who's our our planting apostolic pastor, of course, Uh, Pastor Don Lynn, who's in Honduras right now. Both of them are emeritus elders. And then Seth Owens, Steve uh, Steve Parham, and Bobby Carmody are are all elder advisors. And then if you think about it simply, just our church is basically organized in six pillars or six legs, and all of the ministries fall under one of these six legs. So it's, uh, it's called the grow leg under Pastor Stephen, the care leg under Pastor Jillian, the community leg, which I oversee, which is basically all the small groups, the administrative leg that Amber, our lead administrator, oversees, generations, which is zero to 28. I also oversee that one currently, and our creative department that Seth oversees. And so that's basically the organization of our church. And uh, Rick, why don't you tell them a little bit more about just some of the other financial groups that we have for accountability's sake. Sure. So we have a finance team that is comprised of seven names that you might know as employees and then five additional ones that are not employees. So that we have a mixture of folks that are in the day-to-day as well as the accountability and the insight and the expertise of a a lender, a realtor, a banker, a CPA, and my beautiful wife, the accountant. Um, So we um, provide help as far as the finance side of it, having some outside viewpoints mixed in with the inside ones to, to run the, the finances. Awesome. Yeah. Perfect. Let's Next move slide. on. I'm sorry, that was so awkward. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to talk about giving next. I just want to uh, just remind you that, you know, there, there's, I don't know how many, raise your hand if you grew up going to church. Okay, raise your hand if you, like, didn't, like, most of your life you didn't go to church. Maybe this is your first or second church experience. Okay, so if you're new to church, you may not know this, but there's there's a lot of different ways that people do church. And when it comes to church, there's a lot of different ways that people talk about money in the church. And sometimes it can get really weird, manipulative, arm-twisting, legalistic, and, and sometimes it can be really healthy. I'm so thankful to be part of a church that views it, I think, in a healthy way. I hope that you would agree. Um, you know, we, we are just trying to recognize the fact that God has given us everything that we have. And so when it comes to serving on a team, when it comes to Father's Market, when it comes to a small group, when it comes to coming to church or even giving our money, all of those things that we would do as parts of our faith walk are all responses to what God has already done. This is really, really important for us to get, that we recognize that we're not doing and serving and giving in order to earn any position with God, in order to be seen as good enough in his eyes. What we're doing is we're responding to the fact that he's given us everything. He's given us breath in our lungs. He's given us our family and our friends and this nation and freedom. And he's given us salvation and forgiveness and love. And He's given us all these, those things. And so when it comes to giving, we at this church, we like to emphasize that he's given us 100%. And like my kids say, my kid just said the other day, he's like, wow, isn't it so crazy? God only asks for 10% back. Hmm. It's pretty amazing, isn't it? that he asked us to give 10%, which is a tithe, and then we can also choose out of free will to give above and beyond that. But I just want to say thank you on behalf of our eldership and our whole staff. Mm. This faith community has always grown in giving, I believe, every single year of the church. And so thank you so much for your faithfulness because God is using your finances and, of course, your time, talent, and all those things, but also your treasure to build his kingdom. And so, Rick, can we take a a little closer look at the actual numbers? So I don't believe we've talked about this yet. It says giving last fiscal year. What's our fiscal year? All right, so that's April 1st, 2020. 
till uh, March 31st, 2021. So what was going on around April 1st a year ago? <laughs> COVID. Um, and so I thought it was really cool to recognize this giving is, it's amazing. I mean, it, it can bring me to tears because despite everything that happened with COVID, despite everything else, God just provided. Um, and it's amazing. Just, it's amazing. We'll stick with that. Um, that being said, being the accountant guy, I need to recognize that when you give, uh, there's unrestricted funds. So that's general ties and offerings, the 1799203. But if you give to something specifically as a 501c3 nonprofit, we have to practice what's called fund accounting, which means we have to set it apart and spend it exactly how you designated it to be given. So we keep track of those uh, restricted giving last year, the 49K, and um, we were blessed. I mean, crazy. We're blessed, yeah. More money. $1.8 it's amazing. And so as, as God has brought that money in, we're going to talk a little bit about how we've spent that money. And just, I just want to share the heart of that before Rick gets into the, the figures of it. Um, again, just to make sure you know the heart of our eldership and our lead pastors and our staff is that the way that we view God's money is, I think, biblical, that we're just stewards of it. Yeah. It's a really important word, that we're just stewards. It's not, it's not our money. It's not, you know, it's not my money. It's, it's not like we could just do whatever we want with it. We're doing our best to be led by a few things. Number one, the Holy Spirit. So we seek and we pray. And by the way, if you didn't know this, I think this is a fun fact. We actually changed our entire fiscal year, and I don't know how much work went into that, but we changed all that specifically so we could take advantage of, as a church, how we fast and pray in January so we could specifically listen to the Holy Spirit as to how he would have us direct our funds for, our funds for, the, for the following year. And so we, we take seriously, it's not just strategy, it's the Holy Spirit. But number two, it is strategy. We're going we're gonna to try and, you know, do, come up with a strategy and use wisdom on where to put finances. And so I just want to uh, make sure that you guys know that it's not just one person or a few people that see the numbers and s sit up in some uh, office, you know, and, and make all the decisions about where the funds go. There are eyes and eyes and meeting after meeting after meeting that, <laughs> honestly, probably more meetings than we want to be in but we know that it's healthy accountability. Every extra dollar that we have that is gonna go towards a place, we'll sit around and we will all like list them all out and we'll vote and we'll, we'll just, because we know that sometimes in this crazy world, people get really crazy and, and bad things happen with money. Mm -hmm. And so we wanna make sure you guys know we're doing our best to have lots of eyes on it and lots of accountability and it says wisdom is found in the multitude of counsel. Um, and there's just one more thing I want to say, just in terms of the heart, just so you know, because I think this is something significant in our church, too. Nobody on our lead team, other than maybe our administrator, but definitely not your lead pastors, and definitely not anybody else that has the title pastor, knows what any of you give, like the number that you give. That's right. We don't look because we're not going to want to stand up here and preach and, and have that be some weird thing in the back of our mind, twisted, making us feel like. So we don't look at what people give, the numbers that they give. We're trusting because God's tr entrusted you to listen to the Spirit. We're trusting, and again, we thank you because you have been faithful. And so, Rick, why don't you tell them a little bit about the, the details of the expenses and where some of the, the money has gone. Sure. So we tried to break it out into a few categories for the purpose of this. As Seth pointed out, there is uh, a full balance sheet and profit and loss available at the Welcome Center, right? That's what it's called. And, um, and or if you have questions on these, please come ask me or the accounting team. We will be available to answer any and all questions, give you details. So there's that. Uh, over the wall. 61,000, Craig's gonna talk about that more in depth coming up, but uh, ministries, not over the wall, I guess, inside ministries, the men's, women's, all those sorts of things that, that we were talking about earlier. Personnel, what a blessing through COVID to be able to not have to lay anybody off, to, to keep folks employed. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 
Um, that's amazing. Uh, it costs money to turn the lights on, keep the air on today, right? We like that. Um, general is the hodgepodge of everything else. Again, if you want the details, I can give that to you. But the total of all those spent expenses, the 1.309778, um, when you subtract that from the 1.8 that you gave earlier, that God provided, leaves 538,729. And after Craig talks about over the wall, I'll tell you what we did with that. Awesome, yeah, I just wanna focus on that one real quick, uh, just so you know what that means. We are, are, have a vision here at the church to, there's so many things that happen on this property and you know, in the church as it were, which oftentimes is in the building, um, but we have a vision to generously reach not only our city outside of the walls of the church, but our region, our nation, and of course, uh, all over the world. And so um, this year, through all these, these are just some of the different ways that we categorize in terms of how we look at our spending and our expenses. Our first responders room, we have a room in the back that's available for all, all first responders um, in the city. I don't know if you knew that or not, but it's just a place that's totally free. It's just stocked with food and drinks, and it's a place for them to go and rest. And so that's a really cool ministry that we have. Our missions, missionary support was 35000 Benevolence was 12000 Now, uh, fall, fall Festival and Single Moms, uh, through the last fiscal year, uh, weren't able to take place. And so that's why those numbers are zero. Usually we give quite a bit to that. Um, but overall, I just want to celebrate with you that there was $61,000 that was spent on things that were not basically primarily benefiting us in this room. And so I think that it's really cool that, and, and we have a desire to see that number grow bigger and bigger and bigger as God brings in more that we would not just, you know, spend it as it were on ourselves, but just to give more and more and serve and have other ministries outside of the walls of the church that will lead people into the kingdom of God. All right, now we get to nerd out. Um, we get to talk about the balance sheet, right? Is that, <laughs> if you, you can't can see you? it, which you probably can't, you could find it, it? To all the details printed right. on the packet at the Welcome Center. All right, this number right here is, um, so our current amount in checking, again, as of March 31st, 2021, the end of our fiscal year, is the $450,840. Why? Well, we keep, that's one-fourth of our budget going forward. So we try to be a good steward and to make sure that we have enough in case something happens. You know, Dave Ramsey sort of asked that we keep three months of funds available in our checking um, prepared for any sort of catastrophe. Uh, new campus savings. So you guys have given abundantly towards that. The balance is set aside there, and we're going to hear more about that later. Restricted. Remember, I talked about the forty-nine thousand that was given. We keep it set aside. Uh, we also keep it set aside for what was unspent, and so that's the eight thousand remaining. And then reserved is funds that we've set aside internally. It's not restricted, meaning that we're. Um, restricted in how we can spend it, but we have reserved it for certain areas of ministry. Um, so as I said before, the 500 and some odd thousand in excess that was given this past year, um, now I'm going to share what happened with it. So our cash balance, all of that increased by this 365,278, all right? Additionally, we spent 45... $46,000 here on furniture and equipment, as well as improvements around here, and we detailed them. Uh, $19,000 of Father's Market, $11,000 for the pillars out front, and ten dollars to resurface the parking lot. So add those two together, you got about four ten. dollars Then uh, another $103,000 paying down the mortgage. <laughs> All right, so uh, amazing. Just to debt free, debt free, debt free. That's cool, right? Um, so you add that. Now we're at five hundred and some odd thousand. The difference between the five thirty and that is the change in the balance of those various ministries of those restricted ministries. So it's an equity account. I won't bore you with the details, but if you want to know the details, you can come to me. <laughs> yeah, if you want to know the details of this, 
go grab the packet at the Welcome Center because all the numbers are in there. And so, um, Rick, would you say that, generally speaking, that, that we are a healthy financially church? We are a healthy, healthily, fin- he- yeah. We are healthy We're healthily financially. Fin- yeah, that one. It's beautiful. <laughs> numbers, not words. Sorry. God has blessed us. God has blessed us in a major way. And uh, I want to just share one last little piece of vision for you, since this is Vision Weekend. Um, th- there's a dream that we have in a heart to have this building paid off I- in the next five years. Now, that's a dream. Wow. Now, now, you can have plans and you can have dreams. You know, we have, we have budgets every year, and if, if something's in a budget, then it, kind of the idea is if you follow the plan, it should work. Uh, that's not necessarily in the budget because we don't have room in the budget for it right now. We would love it to be in the budget and to be in the plan, but it's not currently there, but it is a dream. And so we just feel pressed to share with you what the dream is that God's put on our heart because we're the family together. And so we actually don't owe that much on this property, and God really led us to purchase this at a great time. You know, the market's gone up. And so we just wanted to make sure everybody knew that uh, we do think that it's possible, and, you know, God owns the cattle on a thousand hills, and he could do anything. And so we just want to put it out there and let everybody know that that's a a hope and a dream that we have, is to have this thing paid off, and then, of course, to have expanded to more and more locations, which you're going to hear our lead pastor share about here after we check out this video. So what you're going to see next is just a recap of some of the things that God has done over the last year and of some testimonies. And I just thought it was really cool. This was not planned. When I watched this the first time, I looked at Nate and I said, was that, was that planned, the know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and make a difference? And he was like, no. But if you notice the testimonies that you're gonna hear in this video, they speak about those exact things and they weren't put up to it. They talk about coming here and coming to really know God. They talk about finding freedom from, you're going to hear about addiction, but so many other things. They talk about, in the family of God, finally discovering purpose and what God created them for and making a difference, all of us together. And so, as we watch this video, let's just celebrate together all that God has done. Hi, my name's Rachel, and I started coming to The Heart in January 2020. I didn't have a childhood in church Uh, We actually didn't talk about God much. Um, I suffered from a lot of different types of abuse, and it wasn't until I came to church that I realized that God was actually with me through that whole time. I knew about God, but I never really knew Him until coming here. In the time that I've been here, I have learned that coming to church is really important, and... um, You need to build that relationship with not just God and the church, but individuals. And I find that I've been building relationship with as many people as I can because I kind of really feel at home here. It's where I feel like I can most be myself. I pray every day to bring my family with me and someday that will happen because that's part of God's plan.
Hi guys, my name is Jordan House. Uh, in the past two months, God's freed me from so many different vices, whether it be uh, nicotine addiction, a porn addiction at 10 years, um, alcohol addiction, this, that, and the other thing. He's freed me from so much. Uh, May 30th, I got filled with the Holy Spirit. And then June 6th, I got baptized, water baptized. Uh, and it's just crazy to see how much God's done in such a short amount of time. Um, I've gotten prophesied over. Uh, it's just absolutely insane how much he's been doing, not only in my life, but what I can see happening here in the church and other people's lives here in the church. It's just awesome. God is good. I'm Sean, and this is my wife, Chantel. When we came to Heart of the City Church seven years ago, we were a broken people. We came here with church hurt. We had lost a baby. We were on the verge of divorce because my husband was an alcoholic. God has totally redeemed our family. And in September, I get to celebrate seven years of sobriety. And now my wife and I are involved in numerous ministries in the church, and God's given us the opportunity to go to the nations. Yeah, it is definitely not without God and the love and support of this church family and this community yes. that we would not be able to be where we are today. So we want to say thank you so much to Heart of the City Church and to the, our family here. We love you all so much. Can we thank God for what he has done. <laughs> the last few minutes here before we close, we wanted to take just a few Moments just to share where we feel like God has taken us. We've talked about the past. We've talked about what God's done over the last year, even for the last few years. Uh, some things, when it comes to where God's taken us, when it comes to the vision of Heart of the City Church, some things doesn't change. What do you mean by that? There's a, a waypoint or a, a stake in the ground um, that doesn't change. For example, we feel like God's called us to reach a tithe of the city. Would you say that with me, a tithe of the city? And we're very passionate about that, and we are very intentional about that. 
in preaching the gospel, in gatherings, in training folks to do that one-on-one. Um, we have a vision around here called 2020. If you have 2020 vision, guess what? You're able to see clearly near and far. And we feel like very strongly we're to reach those near, but we're also called to reach those far. And honestly, everything in between. You saw in the video several of the missionaries, and some of the missionaries you didn't see. And uh, that's a way for us to be able to reach those who are far. Another play, way that we reach those who aren't in our Jerusalem is church plants. We have a beautiful church plant. A lot of you haven't been around long enough to know the church plant in Goodyear, Arizona. But they are doing an amazing job. River City there in Goodyear, Arizona. And then the church plant in Honduras, Don and Deborah, which a lot of you do know. But uh, even with that, the missionaries that are doing amazing, amazing work throughout the entire world, uh, 2020, near and far. But not just those who are far, but of course we want to reach those who are near. And that's why we do a lot. You saw a lot of the over-the-wall giving is because of that and uh, because we are so passionate about reaching our Jerusalem. And when it comes to it, it's reaching this next generation. Tomorrow I'm going to be talking about uh, the importance of leaving a uh, spiritual legacy. And uh, that's exactly what we want to do. And when it comes down to it, it's every creed, every color of people, men, women of all ages. And so one place that we're going that's never going to change is that waypoint, that stake of reaching the lost. How many of you glad that someone preached the gospel to you? There's a generation that needs that. You think about how do we reach the lost? Well, we do that in our own personal lives. We share our testimony and our story of Jesus with others, and it's very attractive. We get to do that one-on-one. -on -one. But we also do that by um, helping the hurting and the hungry. And uh, Seth talked about that earlier, Market at the Heart. Every Thursday, they're ministering. In fact, if you are not part of a team yet, I highly encourage you to be part of that team on Thursdays. They're welcoming people in with a warm meal. They give groceries. We have a clothing closet. There's prayer available there. And one of the most important aspects is there's meaningful connection and conversation happening at tables at Market at the Heart. Uh, Mindy and her team are part of something called Turkeys and More. They've worked with them for a few years. And their goal this year is to serve and help 7,000 families in our community in November. It's making a big difference. And Jesus is being preached through that outreach arm. As Jonathan mentioned, um, we also help people know Jesus by sending churches to other cities, states, and nations. So we have our church plant for six years. Pastors Joe and Kristen Tuttle have been in Avondale, Arizona, just tearing it up in southern Arizona. I'm not kidding you. Just got into a brand new facility. They've been ministering to hundreds. They've seen hundreds and hundreds of people come to know Jesus in that area. It's amazing what's happening there. And then we have our church plant in San Pedro Sula, Honduras. We've been there. Oh, it's awesome. We've been there several times. Pastors Don and Deborah Lynn and their team are going into villages. They're going into orphanages. They're bringing food in there. They're bringing in the gospel. And they are equipping local Hondurans with the gospel of Jesus Christ to take it into their cities. That's so beautiful. We plan to, Lord willing, be back there again in November. And so God's doing such a great work in those areas. Uh, how many of you have served at least one time at Market of the Heart before? There's a lot of you haven't. Let me, let me, uh, let me throw some conviction on you. It's an amazing place to serve. You should, you should go check it out. Last time I was there, I had never made tamales in all my life. <laughs> but Mindy throws me right in there. Here's rubber gloves. This is how you do it. And I'm like, man, I'm just throwing down making tamales, man. If you don't know how to do it, that's not a problem. They will teach you how to make tamales or welcome people or pray for folks or whatever it may be. We have pursued a local campus 
Our desire is to plant campuses also, not just church plants. There's a difference between, like my wife was talking about church plants and campuses. Church plants, is they're going to stand on their own. Campuses uh, is going to be, as it were, one church, possibly many locations. Last year and possibly even the year before, I think it was two years in a row, we've talked about having a downtown Coeur d'Alene campus Heart of the City Church, Heart Campus, slash Bridges. Let me tell you what we've done. We have pressed into doors, many doors. We've had doors open. We've had doors closed. We've had doors that we didn't feel comfortable walking through. Believe me, we have walked through and looked at facilities. And then all of a sudden, as we're looking at one more closely, COVID hits. I don't even like using that word, honestly, but it is reality that COVID hit. And at that time, I remember sitting with the elders going, you know what? We don't know what's going to happen to the economy. Will people in the church have jobs? It was in the very beginning of it. We didn't know what was going on. And so we chose not to continue to pursue a building that we were looking at. So we've looked at many doors. Uh, We've had doors open, we've had closed doors, we've had many closed doors, and we've had doors that we didn't feel like pursuing or feel led to pursue. And through beautiful counsel, hear me out on this, we feel like God has completely shut a door for a campus downtown Coeur d'Alene. Now that doesn't mean uh, not campuses somewhere else. Let me, just hear me out on this. Like Rick uh, was sharing You have given, and the church has saved $444,000 towards campuses. Listen to that. Some of it was very intentional where you said, hey, I want this to go to Hart Bridges downtown. And some of it was just where the church saved. Nevertheless, it all came because you gave one way or the other. Now, because when something's given Uh, precisely for a vision like downtown bridges, it has to go there. And uh, you you heard uh, uh, Rick talk about that, restricted funds. So because we're not going to plant a campus downtown Coeur d'Alene, we're going to plant campuses, Lord willing, in other places. If you gave to downtown bridges and you desire your money back because you were thinking specifically, hey, I want it because it's downtown Coeur d'Alene. Guess what? We will lovingly give you 100% of it back because it is uh, restricted for that. If you're like, well, J.O., hey, I'm, I just want to give because we hope to plant other campuses, then that money is going to be reserved for that. Just the other day, we had a road trip, and it was a beautiful road trip. We got in a van, some drove cars, and we went to Catalog. We're looking precisely in different areas. That day, we were looking in the Silver Valley Catalog. We looked at two different facilities, one that really stood out to us, and two more that we just kind of drove by and checked out. Will it be Catalog? We're very, very passionately praying and pursuing God. We also have a scheduled... Uh, time that we're going to look over in Post Falls and Rathdrum area. So it could be there. Is it going to look like campus bridges? We don't know. Uh, I don't want to say it's going to look exactly this way or exactly that way. We, it's not so vague that we're like so spiritual that we're not trying to make decisions. We're trying to make decisions. We're very, working very hard praying toward it, but we don't know exactly what it's going to look like. Let me give you an example. I walked in this building right here, this building, look at me, this building right here, years ago, and bought parts for my four-wheeler. Did God reveal to me that this was going to be heart of the city church when I went and paid for the parts right back there by that back door? I had no clue that this was going to be heart of the city church. So God, he calls us to dig, search, ask, knock. And that's all there is to it. We're in a walk of faith. And so I just want to thank all of you for your giving. We've looked, we've planted seeds in Rorley. We've talked about Sandpoint. 
We've talked about Post Falls. I've mentioned Lewiston. I've mentioned Boise. I don't know where exactly the campus is going to be, but we are intentionally looking to plant campuses. And I just encourage you, if you'll be patient with us, it's not like we're not looking. COVID did change some things, especially downtown Coeur d'Alene. And so we hope, honestly, at the end of the day, from Heart of the City Church at the main campus, we want to reach a tithe of our city. When it comes to influence in society, we want to raise up and equip the saints to influence every area of society. Politics? Hey, I don't want to be the president of the United States, but if you do, I want to support you in it. In the area of education, in the area of businesses, in every arena, we hope that Heart of the City Church will influence those areas and make a humongous difference. So thank you for your patience as we're on this journey. We love you, and God has great plans for us. It's exciting to me to just listen that God's church is alive and well. We may be hearing other reports, but they're simply not true. They're smoke screens. God's church is being built on the earth, and we're all part of it. Amen? We have um, just been reminiscing and remembering and reflecting as a staff this last week, and I had read the scripture to our staff team on Tuesday, and I wanted to close and read it to you as well. It's Psalm 37, starting in verse 3, and it says, Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. I want you to receive that prophetically. It's happening at Heart of the City Church. It will happen in your individual lives. You are on the perfect time and season of God. The things that are in your heart, God planted there, and we're going to get to see amazing things this next year as a church and as individuals.